Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to Carrots and Olives. Today we're going to be doing a currently inked video and we are going to change it up. I'm going to be doing my currently inked in my onion skin journal. I've had this for about a year so far, I think. It's been a year. Um, and we're going to go through these cases of pens. I do actually have a few more pens inked up, but they're just like those more of the inexpensive pens that you know you have them inked up for a very very long time and use them every so often so I'm not going to go through those but <clears throat> I will be going through these three pen cases so I have my Mr. Cypress um, kimono case that was like a free gift with an order from them. I'm not sure if they always provide this as a free gift, but this is the free gift I got. Um, and then I have my Euroliku three pen case, and I have the Bamkuhen and Superior Labor collaboration porter case. And this one is the only one made of leather. Uh, the Euroliku does have leather tabs which are really nice and um, I do like the fact that it has two zippers so that <clears throat> you know it's just nice to have the two zippers so let's get started um, we'll most likely start with this case I have six pens in here and I thought I would just share what it's looking like right now in this pen case and how it's morphing and changing and I've been really consistently using it so I've also been consistently sharing it with you so you could probably see how much it's aged in the past few months that I've been using it. Also here you could see all the markings from the pen clips and although I don't need to put the pen uh, clip on this lip of leather it does I just like the way it keeps them from like squishing around so that's what I choose to do okay so let's get started and we have this lovely onion skin paper I'm just going to clip everything else down because this paper tends to lift up. Okay, so the first pen is this one and this is my Moo Man. I've had this thing inked for ever since I got it and I switched out the ink. It's postable. And the funny thing is I actually switched out the nib of this pen because the Briolette that I had this nib on, which is uh, one of my recent acquisitions, was not working well. And I know it could have just been the ink, but I found that I would rather write with a medium nib in the briolette and to my surprise this nib works really well in this pen with this ink this combination is perfect so let's just write currently inked and then I'm gonna put the date this is 8, uh, 21. Look how well this writes. Okay. So let's just do a quick swatch. This ink definitely makes it a wet writer. Uh, sometimes I do have to jumpstart the pen if I haven't written with this one in a while 
because it is a body fill, um, sometimes the ink doesn't flow right, especially if I have my pen stored upright. So I just dip it in water and then it immediately starts writing. So this one is the Moon Man. M2. That's a large capacity of ink that it holds. And the ink I'm using is Organic Studio. And this is the Walden Pond Blue. My pen is an extra fine. So this does have some sheening, you can see, and it shows really well on this onion skin paper. So you can see how this is like a perfect combination. I'm really shocked that this extra fine nib does so well in this, uh, with this ink and sheening. So next is my kilk, and this is just a wonderful writer. It's really comfortable to hold. I can post it, but I find that it's better weighted when it's not posted. And since I've gotten it, it has been inked. And the inks I've used in here have just been lovely. So it's just been writing really well. So this is my Kilk Noon Celestial. And the ink is Colorverse. Hayabusa. And my nib is fine, and it just writes spectacular. Even the extra fine kilk writes really nice. This ink has a little bit of some shimmering, uh, but it's really subtle. And it's probably not going to show. Okay, so next up is my Scribo, and I've talked about this. Uh, some people have mentioned that my facet, my facets have lined up really well, and I think that's only because uh, I found at that at first it didn't, and so what I did was screw the body to the grip section really tightly and there was some room for it to screw a little bit more on and now it seems like it's not so difficult for my facets to line up. So I don't know if you guys are, if you, any of you are having trouble with the facets not lining, if that might help you is to just screw on the body to the nib tighter and then try. Wow. So when I did this pen test in my latest video, it did seem like my pen was running dry. But on this paper, it's doing really well.
and maybe it's just me and I know the right angle for my pen now. Let's just zoom a little closer. Okay, so this is a Scribo. Piuma. And the Body Colors Ultra. Now I've learned that I have to write with this pen at a lower angle, which means I can't hold it this way. Um, the ink is Scribo, and it's called Verde. Mediterraneo. And I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. It's an Italian brand and um, my nib size is an extra fine. So it does have give when I push down. And so you can see it writes closer to a fine than an extra fine. And that's just because it's an 18 karat gold nib. So it's a bit soft, but not too soft. Like it's going to um, bend um, and make your letters wonky. And I forgot to mention that the tip of this on the finial, there is like a leaf which I think is the um, icon for writing. Okay, so next we have, of course, my briolette, which is still inked up. And again, this one doesn't really post. So it just stays here off to the side. And this is the pen that I switched out with my Moon Man. I have the same ink in here that I had when I first inked it up. And it just works better with this ink. And maybe it's just the ink that's dry. So this is the Bennu Briolette. And the pen body is the Luminous Lagoon. Now the ink is Ferris Will Press. I'm just going to abbreviate it. And it's the Mirror, Mirror, Mirror of Moraine. This really pretty teal and it shows up much better in a medium. Oh, let's write that. This is a medium nib and it's a Schmidt, Schmidt nib. Next is this pen and I haven't talked about this one yet. It has some really beautiful swirls and the sparkle and it's blue and gray and then there's hints of purple so this is on a whim woodworks and they make pens from blinks this was like a test and I found them on Instagram it doesn't really post and plus, if it did, it wouldn't post deeply and it would be super duper long. But it's very soft and smooth and they shipped rather quickly. And I think I found like the perfect blue color for this. So 
So they're called on a lamb woodworks. And then the color of the blank is called white abalone. And I got super lucky with this nib because it writes so well. The material is actually from a, I don't know, I, I guess a company called Dupris. And the color of the ink is Waterman. Inspired blue. I, I like to think of them as a simple um, ink, but they have, it's just a really nice color. And it does have some shading properties, which you can kind of see a little bit under the word woodworks. Um, oh, and this one is, I think this, yeah, it's a fine nib. What I really like about on a whim woodworks is that when I screw it on it doesn't squeak and I've had a couple of um, independent shops that I've purchased from where the threads will squeak <laughs> and these don't it's just a nice smooth transition and the body is very comfortable it's really soft there it does have like it tapers down on this end um, but it's pretty thick uh, in the middle and for some reason it's just really comfortable for me so definitely check them out they have new stuff that pops up and definitely um, look them up on Instagram so the next one I shared on my Instagram and this one is actually a used fountain pen which I purchased from Penrome. This was my first purchase from Penrome and they I didn't realize that they actually sold used fountain pens and that you can sell your used fountain pens back to them um, for it to be used by someone else. The nice thing is that they have a nib smith who can alter the nibs for you so if you were to buy a used pen and you're not sure if it's gonna write properly you definitely can get it smooth and tuned and even grinded to your liking. So I decided to finally get the nib grind I've been wanting to try for the longest time. So this is a Pro Gear Slim. And I am using Diamine. Um, it's called Flamingo. Pink. And it matches this barrel really well. Now, my nib is actually a architect. So my first architect, you can see it's slanted and it gives a nice thick line going across. So you could see with like the L's and the I's and then a really thin line going down. So it's the opposite of like a stub nib. Still trying to figure out the best way to write 
and it seems like I kind of have to squish my letters down and widen them so that you could really see how this nib works. Um, from what I've been learning is that it doesn't work really well for cursive. It's more for printing and um, still trying to find the right style with this one. Okay, so those are the first six that are in my Bonkuhin pouch. Next, we can take a look at this one. And this is the Mr. Cypress pen. And it is not postable. It is my very first Rodin fountain pen, and it's very beautiful. So I'm going to call it the Mr. Cypress. I got lucky with this nib, it's a Bach nib. I did make it a little bit more juicier when it writes by um, putting some brass shims in between the tines. And they call this Spring B as the decoration mimics like a beehive. And it's has the rotten done to it and um, the ink I'm using is Sailor Monio and this one is the Kiku Kik you Kiki you if you know how to pronounce it please help me out in the comments and this is a uh, fine nib and it's a Bach. So it writes really well. And there's that one. So I'm just gonna put it right back in its little pen sleeve. It's kimono, keep it warm. And then we're gonna move on to the last pouch. And we are going to ink our, we're gonna do this one, which can be posted. And I'm not sure if it's meant to be posted. It looks really nice. It's actually quite comfortable, except that depending on the way that I hold it, it does hit the web of my hand a little bit and can be, um, you know, just a little bit irritating there. But if I hold it like this, where it's more upright, this is usually how I hold it more upright, it doesn't touch. But if I hold it closer to uh, the angle being closer to the paper, it does touch my hand. Now this ink is a little bit questionable because I haven't written with it enough to determine if I truly don't like the ink. <clears throat> so this is Ferris Will Press. And this one is um, Echoes of E10. And it's a matte black. And the ink is 
Robert Oster. Australian Opal Gray. And my nib is a fine and it writes very well. Um, I did mention how the grooves and etching in this brass can sometimes stick to my fingers, but lately it hasn't. And I don't know if that's something I find when my hands are dry, that it sticks more, or um, I find that it sticks to the pink the pink barrel uh, pen that I have from Ferris Wheel Press more so than this one. But the ink itself is questionable because when I first use it, it's quite dark, which is the color I prefer. And then as I'm writing, um, it starts to lighten up and that's frustrating. So I don't know, I haven't used this ink in another pen just yet, so I need to verify if that's really the pen or the ink. So the next one is the Lamy CC and I haven't played with this one in a while but um, I'm glad I have it inked up again because it's just so comfortable and juicy. So this is the Mommy CC dialogue. And uh, this is just like in the navy barrel with rose gold accents. Um, now the ink is Robert Oster. Cities of America Number One, New York and the nib is a medium. So you can see how wet and thick and juicy it is and it's just a smooth writer. I will mention that <clears throat> cleaning this pen is actually quite difficult. I felt like I had rinsed it out a million times and after it dried and I thought it was clean, it still wasn't clean because I was still able to pull residue from the edge of this part of the pen. So it's not very easy. It's quite time consuming to clean this pen. Okay, so last but not least is this one, my first Diplomat Arrow. I haven't talked about this on my channel just yet. I have an unboxing of this one that I will probably share in another video. Um, that is so dreamy. Uh, and it can post, but I do find it back weighted for me. So i rather use it unposted. And I actually ended up switching out the ink uh, right before this video because the ink I was using did not work well with this nib. So now I'm trying a new one. So far, it's okay. I think we all know how I feel about certain warm colors but um, I haven't used this ink in a long time. So this is the Diplomat. Arrow. And it's a metal pen. Um, the color is turquoise. And 
and the ink is Jacques. Elba. Corneline. Egypt. And the nib is actually the 14 karat gold and it's in, I think it's the, yeah, it's the fine. It reads really good. So that is what I have inked up. If you have any questions on the pens or the inks, let me know. And let's take a look without the backing. Shows up really well, especially for fine pens, especially if they're the fine pens are dark. But Definitely, um, if you're interested in crinkly paper, really thin, um, but fountain pen friendly, even these fines and extra fines and these inks work well with this paper. So if you have any additional questions, please let me know and I will catch you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye.